Okay guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create this lovely A-line silhouette or style. Uh, it's pretty simple to create and uh, once again as a beginner I give you quite a lot of information when it comes to pattern cutting in Adobe Illustrator. Um, as I said, you can um, you can follow along this, with this tutorial uh, manually pattern cutting with paper and pen and you know rulers. Uh, just simply follow the same process in Adobe Illustrator. But we're going to be doing it in Adobe Illustrator. Um, there's a few requirements that you have for this block, and I'm going to go through the lab in a minute and show you um, what blocks you need to produce this style. And obviously you have your downloads, the cutting table and the PDF pattern pack, but we'll come to this a little bit later on. So first of all, I'm going to navigate to the lab just by clicking this button here. But I have it already open, so I want to maintain this page. I want to come back to this a little bit later on. So here we have Pattern Lab, uh, which is the lab. Let me just clear my selections. There we go, so we start off fresh. And I can either choose a UK standard size, or we have different international sizes here, and you have bust, waist, and hip, and you have more measurements that go into that as well. So you can basically select your size based on your bust, waist, and hip. It won't be accurate to your body, but it will be uh, a standard size. Or you can use a custom size, or a profile, custom profile, and you can create one of these just by going to profiles, following the measurement tutorial, and entering your bespoke or custom sizes into that chart and creating a profile. Obviously uh, you need to be a, a registered user to maintain your profiles. In other words, you can store hundreds of profiles in your account just by creating an account. It's completely free and also you can keep track of all of your, um, let's say, the patterns that you produce or the basic blocks you produce in your library or your account. So I'm going to choose a pre, uh, uh, an existing profile that I've created, 3C Francesca, which is essentially our sampling size, which is what you can see here. And I'm going to click on the bodice, so make sure on bodice, so make sure on block, and I'm going to go for the torso block. And you can read more a little bit about what these do with this little drop down. Also, we have a tutorial that shows you how to navigate the lab uh, pre purchase and also post purchase. That's on our blog, and it's called, um, was it Becoming a Pro at Pattern Lab? So have a look at that, uh, give you a bit of insight in terms of how the lab works. First of all, I'm going to select the torso block because this is the one that we need. So as you can see here, we have requirements, torso block, waist shaping, etc. Um, our preview loads on the right, we have a sleeve block that comes with it, and I'm going to click next. Next I'm going to go for waist shaping, Okay, and obviously you can read more about what these do. And also I'm going to go for the automatic fit, Okay, which uses percentages, which basically creates a nice comfortable fitting block, and it tells you what those ease quantities are in actual centimetres or inches on the side here. And I'm going to click next, which takes us to the length of our block. Now, it's quite important, uh, so depending on what length you want your A-line skirt or dress to be, uh, it's completely up to you. I've done it to pretty much thigh length. So I'm going to click the thigh length uh, dress block here. You can go knee or even floor if you want. It's going to be quite a big block if you go floor length, because we're going to be expanding these. It's going to be huge, but it's up to you. So I'm going to go for thigh, okay, just so it, it covers, uh, obviously, just down, just above the knee. Next, we're going to go to the front. And I'm going to select no seam. Okay, so obviously the front of our garment doesn't actually have a seam on it, so I'm going to click no seam. And it's very important that you go for the straight. So you can see here you've got front, no seam, straight. So I'm going to click the straight dart iteration. And as you can see, our block will preview in a minute. There we go. And that's our straight dart, which is important for this block. Next, we're going to go to the back of the block. Now it's up to you. I've used quite a wide neckline here. Um, so uh, essentially this just slips on over the head. But if you want to have something that's a little bit closer, the neckline is a little bit closer to the neck, then you're going to have to have some kind of opening, probably at the back. So you can select one of these options. I'm going to go for no seam because my neckline is going to be quite wide. And I'm also going to go for the standard mid-shoulder um, dart iteration on the back, which is this. Perfect. Click Next. And you have your basic set in sleeve. This comes with your block. It's really important that you uh, keep this selected because if you do want to add a sleeve later, then this sleeve, which you get with your download, will fit this block. Okay, and save it in one place. Uh, you can also change the sleeve cappies, but if you don't understand this, then just leave it. It's absolutely fine. There's two. And click next. Uh, seam allowances, right, because we're basically going to be pattern cutting this in Adobe Illustrator, we want to use the e pattern download, and there's a little bit more information about what that is here. Uh, this basically is a digital downloadable version of your block and it's editable in Adobe Illustrator. It comes without seam allowance because it's essentially not a finished pattern because we add seam allowance to our finished block later on and I'll show you how to do that. Um, you can of course, as I said before, uh, follow this tutorial 
uh, the paper and pen method, you know, with rulers uh, on a pattern cutting table. And you can do that simply by using the PDF pattern download version uh, and just click add to cart. And I would suggest basically going no seam allowance for that PDF download. And that way you have the uh, finished block without any seams on it, so you can actually cut it and add seams later. So let's just go to ePattern Download because I'm doing it in Adobe Illustrator. Add to cart. Perfect. And let's just go to checkout. Obviously I'm admin so no payment is required um, but here this gives you a little bit of information about your order, all the various eases involved and the different selections that you've made in the lab. Also contains the basic set and sleeve. And then when you're happy with your order, just to confirm, click I've read and agree to terms and conditions. You can read these, just explains a little bit about what you can do with our blocks. Um, they're pretty much royalty free um, but obviously have a look and see uh, how it might apply to you and your business or your clients or customers, whatever. Uh, just click confirm. This will take you to PayPal, which is our payment gateway. Obviously for me it won't. Uh, so once you've completed your purchase, you'll be directed to this screen here, which is the order details page, which is lovely. Um, so here you can obviously view your invoice and print that off if you need to. Uh, you can order also go back to all of your orders if you're a registered user. And you can edit your measurements for this block and you can also add notes. But for the time being, I'm just going to focus on these two. So the torso block is the one we're going to be amending and changing. So I'm going to preview and download this first. So here's our block. It's a nice overview, nice and big. And here is where you might be able to spot any issues with your profile, if you've maybe got any inaccurate measurements. And if you are worried about the look or fit of your block, you can always go to our troubleshooting guide, which gives you really in-depth information about how the, the measurements you've entered affect your block and how you might be able to change your block to fit. Always recommend, um, obviously, twirling this up as a basic block first, assessing the fit, and then going on to pattern cut once you're happy with the fit. And you can also edit your measurements by clicking this button. But I'm just going to go, because I know this block works, it's our sample size, it's pretty much perfect. I'm going to click download. And I'm going to save it to my desktop. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it, so my profile is 3C Francesca. Probably a good idea to, uh, yeah, to name your folder after the profile you've used. And I'm going to call this A-Line Dress Tutorial. Actually, it should be A-Line Style Tutorial. Just keep it cohesive. Create folder. And then in that folder, I'm going to name this. So what is it? 3C Francesca. Oops. A line uh, torso because this is the torso block. Let's put style in there and click save. Okay, once we're happy with that one, we've downloaded it, we're going to just close that window and go to our basic setting sleeve. Once again, really important to keep this with your block, so if you want to make a sleeve later, you can. Uh, once again, you can edit your measurements, you can also go to the troubleshooting guide, just click download and then save it in the same folder. Let's use the same name but instead call it sleeve. Save. Lovely. Okay, so that's pretty much our two patterns downloaded. We can navigate away from this. I'm going to go back to my tutorial page, uh, which is here, and I'm going to go down to cutting table and PDF pattern pack. So I'm going to download the cutting table, and I'll show you what the cutting table is in a minute. Essentially, it's just a very, very large space in Adobe Illustrator with a key, which allows you to add attributes and elements to your block to finalize them and gives you enough space to pattern cut your blocks. So I'm just going to click Save in the same folder, keep them at the same place. And same with the PDF Pattern Pack. And this simply allows you to transfer your finished pattern onto, let's say, A4 or A3 template, which you can then print out or save as a PDF and send to friends or put it online or sell it. It's completely up to you. I'm just going to click Save. And now we can navigate away from that page. Uh, where is it? Let's have a look. Okay, so yes, here we have our... There we go. Here we have our cutting table. So let's just open up that folder. Oh, sorry, this is the wrong folder. This is from a previous tutorial. Let's just open up this pattern here. Wait, sorry, 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 sorry. Let's forget that. Um, I'm going to take these and put them into this folder. And then going to get rid of this one. Don't worry, essentially all of your blocks will be in the one folder. I'm just... Uh, Moving around a bit. Okay, here we go. Let's get rid of these. Past tutorial. Okay, so what you should have in this folder is essentially your sleeve block, your torso block, saved as SVGs, and also uh, the cutting table zip and PDF print template zip as well. So I'm just going to simply double click to uh, unzip these. This happens in Mac. Otherwise, if you're with a PC user or you are a PC user, um, I think WinZip or 7Zip will probably unzip these for you. 
Same with this one. And then we can just get rid of those zip files. There we go. Okay, so first of all, to start off our uh, pattern cutting, we're going to open up the cutting table folder and then open this up in Adobe Illustrator. So just by double clicking this should open it up in Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so a few um, navigational tools here before I explain the pattern cutting table. Um, so if you hold down the space key on your keyboard, you get a little hand here. If you click and drag, you can move around the page very, very easily just by clicking and dragging. Also, if you hold down the control key on your keyboard and hit plus, you zoom in, and minus zooms out. So with these two in combination, you can actually you know, move around quite easily. It's a really handy way of getting around. Okay, so to start, let's go to File and then Open. Let's go to our folder that's on our desktop. And let's go to the torso block, okay, which is here. I'm just going to click Open. And this will open up on a separate tab in Adobe Illustrator. Let's just zoom out, Control minus. And I'm, all I'm going to do is going to go to Select All, which selects all of your pattern. Go Edit, Copy. And then I'm going to go to my Cutting Table tab. I'm going to go Edit and then Paste. And that's just basically paste it into your page. As you can see, the cutting table is a huge area that you can work on. And it also has this really handy key over to the left here. And it just gives you notches, fold lines, grain lines, pattern fill if you want, guideline, and also points to help you measure. Okay, So we use this to finish off our block and also to help us pattern cut. That's why we kind of created this template for you. So, first of all, we have our block. I'm going to go to my big selection tool, which is the black one. And I'm just simply going to select this block on the right here, and I'm just going to move it off to the right-hand side, so we have plenty of space to uh, to draft this A-line shape, because we're going to be expanding these blocks out. Okay. So first of all, um, to start pattern cutting, what we're going to do is we're going to essentially these are all grouped items. We want to clean our pattern up, so we have a bit of space to work with. So I'm going to select with my big selection tool. I'm just going to click and drag over these both of these blocks, and I'm going to go to Object and then Ungroup. And what that does is, it allows me to select individual elements within. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the bits of the block that I actually need and remove bits that I don't. So for this tutorial, we've got a big selection tool. I'm going to click and drag over, uh, let's say, the outline of our block, especially these two little notch points, the waistline as well, just like that. We don't need any other elements within, within this block. I'm going to go Object and then Group. Okay, I'm just going to move this over to the left, or let's move it over, let's just move it somewhere out of the way. Okay, so I've separated these two pieces. I'm going to move over to this side, and I'm going to click and drag over that little notch point on the armhole and the outline of the, uh, the block. And I'm also going to hold down my shift key and then click on the waistline. And I'm just going to go object and then group. Perfect. Let's move that over to the right hand side. And as you can see, we've got all this information. Ah, there is one thing I've forgotten, sorry. Let's go back. If you want to go back, you can go Control Z, and that essentially cycles through uh, all of your, let's say, all of the things that you've, you've been doing. All of your, yeah. Uh, if you hold down Control Shift and Z, it'll cycle forward. Okay, so it'll take you forward in time. But I want to go back, and I want to. So I want to select the outline of my block, the little notch there. I want to hold down the Shift key and select the waistline. Then let's zoom in, and I want to select the bust point as well. Okay, that's really important. I'm going to go Object and then Group, and I'm going to move this off to the side just by clicking and dragging. Now, we have the information here, so I'm just going to select all of the information, my big selection tool. I'm just going to move it out of the way, and this should just scroll down, just scroll it right out of the way, just down here. We're going to use that later on, but for now, we just want these two clean blocks. Oops, perfect. Okay, so next I'm going to get my big selection tool, click and drag it into the center, click and drag this into the center so they kind of line up. Also it's quite faint. I'm not sure if you guys can actually really see this. So I'm going to make these lines a little bit thicker and I'm also going to remove the fill from my block so it's easier to edit. So I'm going to use my small selection tool, click, and then going to select just the outlines of the blocks by clicking and dragging over the two. And I'm then going to see if I highlight these. I'm going to highlight the fill by clicking on it and then I'm going to go none. And then I'm going to go to my stroke, which is over here. If you can't see this little icon in the right-hand side, just go to Window, and then it should be here, Stroke. There we go. And I'm just going to up the weight of that line to, let's say, two points. And that's nice and thick now. We can see it. Okay. I'm also going to maybe do the same for the waistline. Small selection tool. Click on that point. Hold down the Shift key. Click on the other line. And then let's up the pointage to two as well. 
perfect. Okay, so that's our block nice and clean. Next we're going to start actually pattern cutting this block. So first of all, I'm going to draw a guideline. So let's just go to our line tool and click on that. And I'm then going to let's zoom in a little bit so we can see the back panel. I'm going to start work on the back panel first of all. I'm going to go from the very top of this, uh, let's say, armhole notch, which is basically where the, the sleeve fits onto this block. It's just the guidelines that allow them to match up. And I'm just going to click and drag. Okay, I'm going to drag a line out to the center back. Now don't worry if it's not uh, ver uh, horizontal. If you hold down the shift key, it'll lock it to the horizontal. Okay. Let's just add that in. Um, also, we want to make this a guideline. So if you have your small section tool, just click on this line, go to your eyedropper tool. It might look like the measure tool, depends. Um, just simply, if, you f if it's the measure tool, just simply click and hold, go to the eyedropper, and then here you can see guideline. Just click on that, and it will create a guideline. Or it will give that line the attributes of what a guideline should look like. Next, we're going to go for another line. I'm going to click and I'm going to click and drag from this point to this point. And you see a little grey box on the side? It says dimension or distance is 1.06 centimeters. So I know this is 1.06. Okay, which is great. So that's 1.06. I'm then going to get a point. So let's scroll over to the left hand side here. This is a point. Get my big section tool, click on it. Edit, copy, edit, paste. You can also do, um, so if you select it, go Command or Control C on your keyboard will copy it, and Control V on your keyboard will paste it. So Control C to copy, Control V to paste. Next, I'm going to simply drag with my big selection tool. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to drag it. So let's find the center of it. I'm going to click and drag to that point there. Okay, now this line, what was it again? I think it's like 1.06. Yeah, 1.06. If you're not sure, just get your small selection tool, click on this line, like that. And then here, you should have document information. You can also find that, go window, and then go document information. And then here, if you click, and normally it has document selected, if you click objects, it will tell you the distance of that line. Okay, this is really important when it comes to pattern cutting in Adobe Illustrator. So that's 1.06. Now, what I want to do is create, I want half the distance. Okay, so I'm going to select that point, get a big section tool, I'm going to select that point, use the enter key on my keyboard, and go 1.06 forward slash 2. Now what that does is that basically divides that line. So it's saying 106 divided by 2, which is 0.53. And then in the vertical box, I'm going to go 0. So I'm going to be moving, let's preview, I'm going to be moving 0.56 cm along from that point, which is essentially halfway between these two points. So what I'm doing, just click OK. What I'm doing is I'm finding the halfway point between these two. So if you're measuring, you know, on paper and uh, if you're doing it the manual pattern cutting way, just measure the distance between these two points, find the halfway point. I'm then going to click on this point here, go to my rotation tool, just to be absolutely perfect. Click on that point as my rotation, and that's essentially 0.53, the distance from this edge. And so if I line it up, I know that, that the distance from here to here is 0.53. There we go. It might seem a little bit complicated, but essentially once you get the hang of it, it's very quick and very easy. Okay, so next we're going to draw another guideline. So I'm going to get my small selection tool, click on this point here, or this line. And then I'm going to go to my line tool, and I'm going to click from the center of this point. I'm going to take it, click and drag all the way through the center of that dart until it hits or intersects this line. So essentially draw it down, make it intersect that line, pull it along until it goes through the center of your dart. Okay? Smashing, that's our guideline. Okay, we're also going to draw another guideline now. Let's just make these a little bit bigger so you can see them. Let's make them two points, and we can also change this to be six and three. That might be a little bit clearer. Maybe we should go 20 and 10. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, so now we have much clearer lines. Okay, so we're going to draw another guideline. In fact, let's just change that as well. Um, we do another guideline, so I'm going to select small section tool, just select one of the guidelines to get the attributes of that line. Go to my line tool and then click on that point where those two intersect, just here. Click and drag all the way down to the hemline. Use the shift key just to um, centralize it or lock it to the vertical. See? And yeah, okay, this sometimes happens. You might lose a bit of your pattern, but if you just zoom in and out, it'll come back again. And then once you've gone past the bottom of your block, just simply get your small selection tool, click on the bottom of that anchor point, and then drag it up, holding down the shift key so it locks, 
until it meets the bottom of your pattern. Perfect. Okay, so next we're going to start to separate this panel from this panel. We're going to divide this block in half because we want to essentially close this top dart and swing that pattern out to create that A-line shape. And to do that, all I'm going to do is simply select my small selection tool, select the outline of my pattern, go to my scissor tool. If you hold down, you'll either be one of these three. If it's a racer tool, just click and hold, scissor tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply cut at this middle dart here. I'm also going to scroll down with my mouse to the bottom and I'm going to cut it at the hemline just there. Okay, lovely. So these two blocks of, or these two panels have now been separated in terms of they are now two completely separate items, which is what you do in manual pattern cutting. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this line here, small selection tool, I'm going to grab that point. So just select the line first, oops, select the outline first. That gives you the point. Grab the point, drag it down to here. Same on the opposite side. Drag that point down to there. So essentially you're making a slightly larger dart. And the next what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Pathfinder. Now if this is your first tutorial you might be new to this. So just go to Window and then Pathfinder. And that will bring it up on your side column here. It looks like this. Okay, Pathfinder. And then so with this item selected, so Small Selection Tool, click on it. Then go to Unite. Okay, so now we've got one completely, uh, uh, hang on, let me just show you. We've got one completely separate panel, okay, and it's, it's been joined. There you go, there's a line down that center piece. So next I'm going to go to the other piece, or the, uh, the, the left-hand side, small section tool, click on the outline, and then I'm going to unite that as well. So now we really have got two completely separate pieces, okay. All right, let's zoom in. Now, obviously, I want to have my guidelines. I want to take my guidelines with us. I don't actually need this guideline anymore, so I'm going to get rid of it. Just click on a small selection tool. You can either click on it or select over it, and just hit the backspace key on your keyboard a few times. Do it a few times, not just once. Otherwise, you're left with remnants. You see those little blue dots? You're left with those. So just get rid of them. Same with this point up here and also this. Just keep it clean as you go along. Also, we have a guideline. I'm not sure you can see. There's a guideline there as well. So I'm just going to click on that line, hit delete a few times. We do want to keep the waist though because this is an important guideline for us when it comes to pattern cutting. But we want it to be on this block and on this block. So I'm going to go to the small selection tool, select the line and then cut in the center. Okay, lovely. And so essentially in manual pattern cutting this is just like separating your block into two halves, okay, using this point which we created earlier. But this pattern is, is, is grouped, it's all one piece. So what I need to do now is just go Object, so select it, Big Selection Tool, go Object, Ungroup. And now you see they're all completely separate. But that's a problem because we want essentially this piece to be one grouping. So I'm going to get my Big Selection Tool, click and drag over the whole area, go Object and then Group. Same for the left, click and drag, Object and then Group. Perfect. All right, now we're ready to basically rotate these blocks. So close this top dart and open this up to create an A-line style, which is lovely. So get my big selection tool. I'm going to click on this right-hand piece. I'm going to go to my rotation tool, click, and then I'm going to click on this point here. Let's just zoom in so you can see. Click on this point, and then I'm going to find this line, click and drag, and then you can see you can rotate it, okay? You can rotate that dart, close, you can overlap it, do whatever you want. But I'm just going to basically close that dart by joining those two lines together, okay? Great, so that is essentially uh, our new A-line shape, or it's, it's the beginnings of our A-line shape. But next what I want to do is basically consolidate these blocks, in other words make these two now one. I want to get rid of this line. It's almost like sellotaping this line together to create one block. And to do that, I'm going to get my small selection tool. I'm going to click and drag over those two lines, go to my Pathfinder, and then Unite. Okay, And as you can see, that line's now disappeared, and this is all one block. There is one thing we have to change, though. As you can see here, we've got this little lump on the shoulder, Okay, which is a problem, because we want to have a nice straight shoulder line. So what we do is just simply go to your small selection tool, select this line, and then click and hold on your pen tool and you see this minus delete anchor point tool and just go minus and maybe minus again and there you have that nice straight line from this point to this point you can actually cycle between these pens so you have P plus minus and shift C these are all shortcuts that you use on your keyboard and it makes things much much easier and we're doing that from now on but you can find them all just over here by clicking and holding so the pen tool 
uh, let's click off. So the pen tool, if I go P on my keyboard, you can see I can now create things. If uh, Or a shape. If I want to remove a point, minus on my keyboard, minus. If I want to add a point, plus on my keyboard, plus. If I want to use the, what is it, what's it called? If I want to use the anchor point tool, I go shift and C. Hang on. Shift and C. And that allows me to create the anchor control point tool. Okay? Let's just get rid of that. So I'm going to be using those shortcuts from now on. Right. Okay. So we have now consolidated that block. We've now removed that little lump on the shoulder line. Looking really nice. Okay. So next, what we want to do is essentially um, we want to create this A line shape. So I'm going to add a little bit extra to here. And essentially what that is, is it's the distance from these two points. So I'm going to get my line tool, and I'm going to measure the distance from this point to this point. And that's 3.59 centimeters. Okay, you can see uh, just there. So I'm basically clicking and holding, and that gives you a measurement tool. Clicking and holding 3.5 cm, which is great. So I'm just going to delete that line. Don't need it anymore. 3.5 in my head. I'm going to get another line tool. Click, and I'm going to drag. I'm going to click on this point, and I'm going to drag, and I'm going to basically move through this hem point here, okay? So I want to, almost like a guideline that continues through that hem line. And I'm just going to go to my eyedropper tool, make that a guideline. And it was 3.59, I believe. Let's just check. Yeah, 3.59, perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my point. I'm going to get a point from my key, uh, all the way up here somewhere. I should be using the space key. There we go. I'm going to grab my point. I'm going to go Control c to copy it. And I'm going to go Control v to paste it. And let's just zoom in. I'm then going to take this point, big section tool, take this point and then move it to the side seam okay, of my back panel. I'm then going to go hit the Enter key. And I'm going to go 3.59, which was the distance of this dart here. And I'm going to go 0 on the vertical. And I'm, look, preview. There you can see it's moving horizontally across by 3.5. I'm going to hit OK. Next, I'm going to go to my rotation tool, which is here. And I'm going to click on that side seam point, which is where the original point was. And so I know that that's 3.5 cm away. And I'm just going to simply line that up with my guide. And I can even remove this guide now if I don't want it. So small selection tool, just delete that off. OK, great. OK, so that's my first point. Next, we're going to basically, we're going to remove a little bit of material from this. We're going to basically have like more of an empire uh, waistline. We're going to move the waistline up slightly. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure, to so get my line tool, I'm going to measure the distance between these two points. 17.59 centimetres. Just delete that guideline. I'm going to get my point. I think I already have one, so Control-V. Yeah, so it's already on my clipboard. I'm going to move that point up here. Oh, might be a little bit tricky. Zoom in. Just grab the centre, and then line it up. Perfect. Right, I, uh, I keep forgetting these measurements, so let's just find that distance again. 17.56. So go to your big selection tool, click on your point, and then go zero horizontal. We're not going left or right, we're going down. And then we're going to go 17.59 divided by 2. Click off, gives you 8.795, and the preview shows you where it is as well. And let's just click OK. All right, that's not quite in line. So I'm just going to get my big selection tool, select that piece or that point and then with my arrow keys on my keyboard I'm just going to nudge it around there you go perfect spot on okay so next we're going to we're going to narrow this waistline okay so oh, it's not essentially the waistline but it's we're just shaping the block just do it <laughs> um okay so I'm going to get my big section tool I'm going to click on this point here I'm going to hit my enter key and I'm going to go minus 1.25 nope 1.25 and zero vertically I'm going to hit preview there you go, as you can see, that's our preview. I'm going to click OK. So that's our, that's another point that's basically going to be creating this A-line shape. So next I'm going to be drawing or reshaping our side seam, which is from this point to this point to this point and then to here. But we're going to come to this curving later. So let's go to our pen tool. Uh, I'm going to use P on my keyboard. I'm going to go point, point, and then click point. Okay, that's our new side seam, and you'll see you've got this. Don't worry, just go to your small selection tool and click off. There we go. Also, it's a little bit fine, so let's get the eyedropper tool, and let's get the attributes of our pattern block. There we go, so we're getting there. All right, so next, I want to basically join this line to my block, okay? Because this is the line that we're going to be using. So I want to get rid of this existing 
this existing line here. So I'm just going to select my small selection tool, I'm just going to select the outline of my block, go to my cut tool, cut, cut. I'm then going to go to my small selection tool and I'm going to get rid of this. In fact, you can get rid of it or you can keep it in place. It's up to you. Um, you know, If you want to remember where your existing block was, you can use it as a guideline. I'm just going to get rid of it because it's, uh, it's in the way. Okay, grand. We've got a little additional point down there. Don't worry about this. Okay, so that's the new A-line shaping of our block, which is great. It's not quite there yet. So next what we're going to do is we're going to measure the distance between this point and let's say uh, you know uh, where the armhole point is okay and I'm doing that simply by getting a line tool clicking oops clicking on that point and dragging up holding the shift key to lock it to the vertical and then it pretty much is in line with my armhole and that's 8.82 I'm then gonna let's go calculator 8.82 divided by 3 is 2.94 perfect so 2.94. I'm going to basically curve this this side seam here because we don't want a little. Uh, we don't want this to be a little notch. We want it to be a nice smooth curve. And to do that in Illustrator, uh, we use something called Beziers. So I'm going to get the large selection tool. I'm going to select this point and I'm going to go zero horizontal, tab down minus ah uh, what was it 2.59 possibly. Uh, this is tutorial, so it's, it's not a big deal for me. But essentially follow it um, and use that one third measurement. I'm then going to go copy, so that's going to go up. I'm then going to select that point again with my big selection tool. I'm going to hit the enter key again. I'm going to go 2.59. Now I did minus 2.59 to go up and 2.59 to go down. And as you can see, let's do that again. If I go minus, it goes up. If I do plus, it goes down. Let's just hit OK. Perfect. So these are my two points. And what I mean by a bezier is essentially so if I get my small selection tool, click on this point here, and I go to my anchor point tool. Do you remember we used this tool before? These are beziers, okay? Essentially, these are bezier handles, and the curves that it creates are basically beziers. Anyway, so to curve this line, we've now found the points to where these bezier handles need to go. So I'm going to go to the anchor point tool, click and hold, anchor point tool, or shift C on your keyboard, and I'm going to click and drag. And the more you drag down, the more extreme the curve gets. The closer you get, the more subtle the curve gets, etc. You can play around with these. And what I'm going to do is just going to drag that point to the center. And there we have a nice, smooth curve. I mean, it could probably be a little bit more, actually. You can play around with this if you want to. Make it slightly more. It's up to you. I'm going to stick with what I've used originally. And we can now actually just get rid of these points completely. Okay, so that's essentially the A-line shaping for the back of our block. I'm not going to worry about the curvature here just yet because we have to actually find the distance of this line on the front block to make sure they're the same. Anyway, don't worry about that, we'll come to that in a minute. So let's move on to uh, the front of our block. So as you can see, we have our bus point here. Let's just uh, grab that as a guideline. Don't worry about what I'm doing just now. There we go. So that's our bus points, which is great. Um, now, obviously, when it comes to bus points, we don't have the the dart going to the bus point. Otherwise, you'd have very pointy, a uh, very pointy block over the bus. So we we have it slightly further away to create a nice smooth curve over the bus line. However, when it comes to closing darts uh, and obviously reshaping your block, this needs to go to the bus point because that is the point of rotation, and it's not playing ball. So what we do is get your small section tool, click on this point, drag it to the center of that bus point. You might have to zoom in to really get accuracy with that. And next we're going to draw a guideline. So I'm going to select that line there, small section tool, just select that line. I'm going to get my line tool. I'm going to draw a guideline down from that point all the way to the hem, using my shift to lock it to the horizontal, to the vertical, and just finish it at that hem line. And next, as we did in the back, we're basically going to separate this piece, this panel, from this panel. So I'm going to get my small selection tool, click on the outline of my block, go to the cut tool, cut here and then cut at the bus point and also cut at the hemline. Okay, so now these two pieces are completely separate. We want to consolidate them. So I'm going to go to my pathfinder, consolidate or unite, sorry. Same with this one, unite. Okay, these are now two separate blocks. Once again, we want to retain this waistline. So I'm going to select that, small selection tool, select, go to the cut tool, cut. And we've also got this guideline that's knocking around, which we don't need, because we've now consolidated the blocks. I'm just going to small section tool, select it, and then delete a few times. 
Okay, so now let's get our big selection tool, click on this block, the whole thing is grouped. Let's go object, ungroup, and then as you can see, this is now completely separate, all the elements are different or separated. I'm going to get my big section tool, click and drag over the waistline and also this block and go object group. I'm going to go over to my right panel, I'm going to get that little notch, really important to keep that. So we have our block on our notch and I also want to get the waistline, so I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on the waistline, so it's all selected. Object group. Great, so now we have two blocks that are completely separate but are still grouped, which is wonderful. Alright, next what we're going to do is we're going to rotate that dart close and open up this A-line shape. So on the back we close this dart to create the A-line, on this block we're going to be closing this dart to create the A-line, which is lovely. So, big section tool, click on the left hand panel, go to the rotation tool, click on the bus point, and then click on that line and just drag it to close that block, lovely. And then next we're just going to consolidate that block to so make these two one again. I'm going to get my small section tool click and drag these two pieces, go to Pathfinder, Unite. And this has not united them. And this happens sometimes, and the reason why is because to unite two objects, they need to be overlapping. So, these two objects, they're close, but they're not overlapping. You can't unite them, okay? It just doesn't work. So, you need them to be ever so slightly overlapping to unite. See? Perfect. So, what we're going to do here is, because we obviously we don't want to... Um Oops, let's go back. We don't want to overlap this because we're going to lose some really important pieces here. Instead, I'm going to go to my Add Anchor Point tool, click OK on any one of these lines, it'll decide for you. And then I'm just going to go to my small point, my small uh, selection tool, find that point, click, and then drag it over the other one, OK? Just so it gives you an idea of what's happening there. There we go. I'm going to get my small selection tool, click and drag over the two panels. Join. There we go. And also we have a redundant point here. You can just keep it clean. Delete anchor point tool. There you go. I mean, you don't want to delete things like that, for example. These are important points. But, for example, when you've got something that's redundant like this, that makes no difference either way, because it's still a straight line, just delete it. Fewer points, the better. Alright, so now we have our A-line shape, which is great. Uh, now we need to do a little bit of shaping, like we did on the back. So, I'm going to uh, measure the distance from the armhole to the waist. It should essentially be the same, 17.66, sorry, the same as the back. So 17.66 divided by 2, so let's get our point. Yes, I've still got it in my copy clipboard, so I'm just going to paste that point in. I'm going to mark that point there, and it was, oh, what was it? 17.66, I believe, originally. Yeah, 17.66. So I'm going to get my big section tool, click on this point, 17.66, hang on, 0, 17.66, vertically down. There we go, we can preview where that's going to be, and hit, oh sorry, 17.66 divided by 2, get rid of the CM. There we go, so 8.83, I'm going to hit OK, and I'm then going to go to my rotation tool, click on that point, and then rotate that to the waistline. Perfect. Okay, now I know that this all looks a little bit complicated and convoluted and it probably would be easier when it comes to paper pattern cutting, but you know what, once you get the hang of this and you become quite proficient at it, it's very fast. And I'm also explaining my process a lot more than I normally would when it would come to pattern cutting this block. Uh, so yeah, bear with it, it's, it's incredibly fast. You can just copy patterns and change them and create facings almost instantly. It's very, very simple. Okay, so next we need to shape uh, we want to create this really lovely curve shape here, similar to what we did on the back. So to do that, uh, we want to move this point 1.25 in. So I'm going to select that point, big selection tool, select that point, hit the Enter key, 1.25, 0 vertically, and we can preview that, and hit Copy. But, as you can see, at the moment, this isn't exactly going 1.25 in accordance with this line here. It's going horizontally across, and there's no way you can do this in the Move options not accurately anyway. So I'm going to cancel that and instead I'm going to go to my square tool, rectangle tool, sorry, I'm going to click, you might see one of these instead, doesn't matter, click and hold, rectangle tool, and then going to click and drag from that center point, like that. Okay, that essentially creates a 90 degree angle, it's like using a set square. I'm going to get my big selection tool, click on that panel, or this uh, rectangle, go to my rotation tool, click, and then rotate that until it meets that side seam, and now we have a perfectly beautiful 90 degree angle to which we can 
move that point. So I'm going to get my big selection tool, click that point, and then go 1.25, 0 vertically. You can preview it, and you see how much we're off there. Hit OK. And then go to my rotation tool, click, and then we can rotate until it meets that line. And we know that's 1.25, which is great. I'm going to delete my guide point, don't need it anymore. And then we're going to move down to the bottom of the hem. And we're going to do similar to what we did in the back here by basically expanding this, creating more of an A-line shape. And the amount we do this by is actually the distance of this. There we go. 3.59, but divided by 2. So I'm going to get a guideline. Let's just uh, go to my line tool. I'm going to click and drag, get a guideline out. Just make sure it's going through, or it's pretty much parallel to that bottom hem line. Get guideline. And then we're going to get this point, copy, paste it in, let's just place it at that hem point there, and I've forgotten the measurement again, so it is 3.59 divided by 2, which is 1.8 is it, 3.59 divided by 2, my maths is terrible, 1.79, pretty close. So I'm going to get this point, big selection tool, I'm going to go uh, minus 1.79. zero. So horizontally backwards, minus measurement to go back, and positive measurement to go forward. So minus to go back, positive to go forward. Sorry, minus to go left, positive to go right. Uh, yeah, great. So this is our measurement. I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to go to my rotation tool once again, and I'm going to rotate this up like that. Perfect. I can also get rid of this guideline now. So just small selection tool, select, delete. It's probably uh, a point to mention what the small and big selection tools do. The big selection tool, if you click on something, uh, like a pattern for example, it takes the whole grouped elements, you see? Uh, whereas the small selection tool will take individual items, whatever you select on, okay? So that's the difference between the two. That's why we, we, we switch between them. Anyway, we now have our points which allow us to draft this A-line, which is great. I'm actually going to get rid of this existing side seam because we no longer need it, so I'm going to get my small selection tool to just select that element here. And I'm going to get cut tool, I'm going to cut, and I'm going to cut there as well. And you can, I said you can keep it as a guideline if you want, but I'm just going to get rid of it. Okay, it looks like down the bottom here we have an extra little lump, which we do. We don't need that, so let's just go to minus pen tool, Click and hold, and just get rid of that little one there. Just to keep it nice and neat. And here, nope, we need that one. Okay, so next we're going to draw a line between here, here, and here. So let's go to our pen tool, which is P. So it's just P. And I connect this point to the center of this point, and then to this point, and then to this one. And that's now been joined. And also, once again, we don't actually need that additional point here because that's essentially a straight line. Okay, so that's now the A-line shape for our front block, which is looking very A-line indeed. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to curve this line. Now, if you remember, it was one-third, okay? Our beziers were one-third the distance between here and here. Do exactly the same thing. I'm going to measure the distance between here and here. Okay, and I'm taking pretty much, um, if you imagine this to be, how can I explain that? Well, you know what, let's do it an easier way. Let's go to our small section tool, click on this point here, and then going to draw a line like that. And I know that that is essentially where my bezier is. I'm then just going to draw a line from that point up to here, 2.59. You can always write it down as well uh, when you're doing this one. So 2.59, great. Okay, so this one's a little bit trickier when it comes to where our bezier points fall, but let's just go, let's get our big section tool, click on this point, and go 0, horizontal, minus 2.59, so we're going to move up, and we can preview that, hit copy this time, and this one we're going to go down, 0, and then 2.59 vertically down, as you can see, like if I were to draw a curve now, this would be a problem, that's not a good curve, because it doesn't work. Um, so essentially we need to rotate these points. So I'm going to draw a line between these two points, like that. And I'm going to get my big selection tool, I'm going to select this point, select this point, select this point. And I'm going to get my rotation tool, and I'm going to rotate around the middle, and I'm going to do this. And you see how 
the angle is essentially the same on both sides. I'm trying to get the angle the same on both sides, so it's even, which is essentially what we did with our back block. Okay, so that's pretty decent. Uh, I'm then going to small selection tool, click on that point, go to my anchor point tool, click and drag, and then mark those points. There we go. And I can also get rid of these now. Okay, that's the curve of our front piece, which is looking fantastic. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to curve the um, hem of this garment. Okay, but before we do that, we want to make sure that these two side seams are the same length. Okay, otherwise we might end up with the front being longer or shorter than the back. So to do that, uh, as you can see here, this line has been separated from the block. So we actually know the distance of this line. We will in a minute. But to do that, if it is joined for some reason, just get your small section tool, click on this line, go to the cut tool, cut, cut. And then that separates that line from the rest of the block. And so once we have this line, we can then go over to document info, or we can go window, where is it, document info. And once again, if you go to objects, it'll tell you 42.4 centimeters, which is lovely. Over here, 42.6. Okay, so we're two mil out on the back, which to be fair, in pattern cutting terms, probably isn't the end of the world, but because we're in Adobe Illustrator, and we can be perfect, we're just going to change the length of this line. Let's just check them first of all. 0.4, 0 0.6. Okay, so this, we're going to move this up by two millimeters, okay? And it might be one centimeter for you, it depends on your block. So this is important to, to look at. I'm going to get my big selection tool. I'm going to click on this point. If you don't have one there, just put a point in, just simply, you know, copy and paste, add the point. Hit the enter key, go zero horizontal, minus 0.2 cm, because we're working centimeters. Preview, there you go, and hit OK. Now, once again, we're going to rotate because we want to do it along that line. There you go. Get the center of it on, oops. Get the center on that line. And the next small section tool, get your line, and then just drag it to the center of that point. And then they will be the same length. So let's go document info 42.4, 42.4. Nice. Alright, um, so next we have our side seams. They're exactly the same length, which is fantastic. We're going to start curving uh, the bottom of our hem, because at the moment they're pretty sharp and jagged. Uh, so we're going to go to our rectangle tool. I'm going to click and drag from this point out a box, and I'm going to get my IDF tool. Let's turn them into guidelines. There we go. And I'm basically going to, let's go edit Oops, sorry. Let's just copy that and paste that in. And I'm going to add the other one. I'm going to get this point here and add it to the opposite side. Oh, we need to zoom in a little bit. Uh, let's just take that point. There we go. And I'm going to rotate around that point until it matches up with the side seam. This is essentially the same as using your Pattern Master to... Essentially, when two seams join, they want to have a nice 90 degree angle, so they're very, very smooth and clean. Okay? So I've created these two rectangles. Now, if I were to draw a, let's say, a guide. So let's say we go from here to here. That's such a steep curve, it's unbelievable. Like, that would be, it's not the end of the world, but you would have a point here, okay, which is an issue. So it looks as though we're going to have to lower the back of our block ever so slightly to accommodate this. Essentially, a line, it would be better to draw a line like that. Does that make sense? So it's 90 degrees here and it's 90 degrees there, or roughly. So we can do that by eyeing it, basically, or by gauging it by eye. The front's going to be fine. That's going to be a really nice smooth curve, but the back isn't. So I'm going to take this block and I'm going to move it down until it's kind of... It's kind of sort of like, you know, in line with this bottom piece here. So I know that that's going to be a nice smooth curve. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Uh, next, we're going to go to our pen tool. And I'm going to click on this point, and I'm going to click on this point, and I'm going to get the attribute of the actual pattern. So you can see this is actually a pattern line. I'm going to go to my anchor point tool. I'm going to click and drag, and you see how that is creating a much smoother curve. And you can play around with this curve. It's completely up to you. Um, I'm not going to go into it now because it would it's a little bit of extra work. But you could always say, well, let's say... This line is, in fact, let's just do it. This line is 33.3 centimeters. Great. Well, let's uh, divide that by three. Divided by three. 
is 11.1. .1. So, okay, let's say that the bezier should be one third from here and one third from here. That should give us a nice smooth line. So let's go. You can also create these points. Let's just create a point. 11.3 horizontally, 0 vertically, OK. And then let's take that point again. Oh, we've already got one here. Let's go minus 11.3, 0, copy. And then let's rotate that to that line there. OK, so that kind of gives us our beziers. So if I go to this line here, small selection tool, go to my anchor point tool, that's a really accurate, because you know it's the same on both sides. There you go. So it's one third the distance of that point to that point. That becomes your bezier. And we can get rid of these. There we go. So there you go, look, bezier, bezier, a really nice, beautiful, smooth curve to the bottom of your back block. We can get rid of these as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm simply just going to consolidate this block now, okay? Because look, it's, it's pretty much the shape of our A line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my small section tool, select the outline of this block, go to my cut tool, cut that point, and I'm actually going to cut this point and this point as well. We don't need that existing hemline. We can get rid of it. And uh, we don't need the existing hemline here either. Get rid of it. But we do probably want to keep this dart because it shows us by how much we've separated this block or create the A-line shape. So I'm going to get my small selection tool and then I'm going to click this point and drag it down to meet that point at the bottom. Okay, so we now have a kind of a finished block. Uh, small selection tool, select these two these two, uh, let's say the dart legs, or the existing dart legs, and I'm just going to go to my dipper tool and create guidelines. There we go. A little bit messy, so I'm going to tidy this up. I'm going to get my small section tool, click on that point, drag it down, and drag it through. You see how you're, you don't want to do that because it's misinformation. You want to just drag it through until it meets the hemline, drag it through until it meets the hemline. Same with the waist, drag it through. And we can do it here as well since we're doing it. There we go. I can get rid of this point now. Let's zoom in. Just select it, delete. And okay, so there's our pretty much our finished back block. But look, it's all in pieces. Okay, this is separate, this is separate, this is separate. So to join them, I'm going to get my small selection tool, click and drag over those two points, right click, average, this just, and click both. This averages the two points together so they're on top of each other. So it's clean, and then hit join. So then right click again, and then join. Okay. Once again, click and drag, right click, average, OK for both, right click, sorry, click and drag, join. Same for the back here, right click, average, OK, join. OK, one complete unique block, looks lovely. So let's do the same with the front when it comes to this curve line. OK, once again, I'm going to get my rectangle tool, I'm going to click and drag a nice rectangle, let's do it roughly half the distance. I'm then going to go, well, let's just make that a guideline. I'm going to go edit, copy, edit, paste. I'm then going to click and drag that to that tip. Let's just make sure it's in the right place, which it is. I can also get rid of that point now. Let's just get rid of that point. And big section tool, click on that element, rotate, click, and then drag. Oh, sorry, I've done it wrong. This is the line you want. So we were here, click this line, drag it so it lines up with the hem. Okay, maybe we have to lengthen it slightly. I mean, we don't necessarily need to. Um, it might be slightly more exaggerated or slightly less of a curve on the front. If you want to, it just means you're going to add a little bit of extra depth to the front of your block. And you'd obviously, you can measure the distance of how much you, you're doing that by. But let's keep it as it is for now. So let's go to our pen tool. And let's click this point and this point. And once again, you can do your one-third bezier. So document info. That line is 38.1 centimeters long. So calculator. 38.1 divided by 3 is 12.7. Click off. 12.7. So let's just create a point. So we're going to go enter key 12.7, 0, copy. We're then going to rotate that down to this line here because it's squared out. And we're going to do the same on the opposite side. What was it? 12.7 horizontally, 0 vertically, copy. 
and these are our bezier points. So let's see what that curve looks like. We can get rid of these square outlines. We can even get rid of this line as well. So let's just go to our point, pen tool. So let's click off. Let's go to our pen tool. We're going to click on this point. We're going to click on this point. We're then going to go to our anchor point tool. Click and drag to that point. Click and drag. Oops, wrong way. Click and drag to that point. So that's a bit more of an extreme curve. You might want to soften it up a little bit, perhaps. You can move this in slightly more. You know, you can move this one in slightly more. It's completely up to you. It's essentially how you do it um, with a pattern master. You know, you create your own curve lines. Essentially, you might think, well, that is too steep. So you want to bring it down a little bit more. So let's just bring that down to about here. Let's bring this down to about here. There you go. That goes there. See, so that's a much nicer, smoother curve. In fact, I'm going to go with that for now. I can then get rid of my bezier points. And I can also, we want to cut, don't we? We want to get rid of these hem bottoms because they're, they're no longer, they're just redundant. So go small selection tool, select the outline, go to the cut tool, cut, cut, cut. Small selection tool, select, delete a few times, hit delete a few times. And we can also get rid of these points. Delete, delete, and we can then just drag, so sorry, small selection tool, click on that point, drag it down to meet the hem, same with this one, just drag it through that line, be careful, drag it through the line, whoop, be careful, it's pretty accurate, um, yeah, and then small selection tool, select this, eyedropper, and then pick up the attributes of that line, there we go, alright, so that is essentially our A-line dress block, or the body of it anyway. Looking great. Uh, so obviously here, you know, you can add, you can go on to add different necklines, different sleeves. It's entirely up to you. Um, I'm actually in this tutorial going to show you how to draft a really simple, pretty neckline, uh, just as additional two, and also show you how to create the facings for it as well. Okay, so to create our necklines, or this very, very simple neckline that we see uh, online here, this one, this really lovely, very, very simple neckline. Um, oops. Really simple. So you have a few options um, about how to draft this. It's all about measurement. So essentially, you know that this is your shoulder point. Uh, it depends how wide you want your shoulder measurement or strap to be, if that makes sense. So this is roughly, let's have a look, this is roughly about 4.5 to 5 centimeters. And essentially, the neck drop is nil, or it's nothing. So oh, this is essentially a nil neck drop. So we want to go about five centimeters long here, and then we're going to keep this as it is. In fact, we might we could always move it up a little bit. In fact, I think this one was. This one, I think, has been moved up by about two cm. You can see by the was it between the two uh, the clavicle bones, I believe. Um, yeah, it's about two cm up. So we're going to do that. So let's just create a point, or you can you know copy and paste your point in. So from the shoulder point, uh, I'm going to place a point at the shoulder just like that, with my big selection tool. And I'm going to hit the Enter key, and I'm going to go 5cm, horizontal, and you can see the preview, zero vertical, hit copy. Actually, no, we're going to go hit OK. We don't want that existing point. I'm then going to go to the rotation tool. Now, if you hit R on your keyboard, that pre-selects it. Okay, so we're now starting to use um, shortcuts. So hit R on your keyboard to get the rotation tool. Click on that point, and then rotate it up to the shoulder line. And then here we're going to get another point. So let's just control C, control V, copy and paste that in. Move it to the center front neck. And we're going to go horizontal move. So sorry, cancel. Hit the enter key on your keyboard, zero horizontally. And we're going to go minus 2.5. We're going to go up 2.5. And let's just hit um, copy. Nope, sorry, we're going to hit OK. Zero minus 2.5. Okay, lovely. We don't actually have to uh, rotate this one because it's already there. In fact, you know what? 2.5 is a bit too high. You can measure this uh, using your tape measure. Let's go down by 0.5. So it's actually 2 cm we're moving up. Okay, great. Uh, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw my neckline. So let's go to our pen tool, P on your keyboard. Click on that point and click on the center of that point, and that's our new neckline. Now, if you want, you can keep that as a point here, uh, you can keep it as a diagonal, or you can create a nice curve. So shift C on your keyboard brings up the anchor point tool. Click and drag. There we go. You can create a nice soft curve. You can create a really sharp curve. Essentially, you don't really want to go past 90 degrees here or 90 degrees here. You could do that, but then essentially 
think think about it as a mirror image. You know, you're going to get a point on the opposite side. So you want to keep it quite basic. So just click and drag, and you hold down the shift key, will lock it to the horizontal. Okay, just create a nice smooth curve, like so. Okay, but you can do anything you want. You can have it as a yeah, as a point if you like. It's up to you. Uh, right, okay, so now what we we'll do is we're going to basically remove our existing neckline and add this one in. So we can get rid of these points, small selection tool, just select them and then delete. Then let's get small selection tool, select the outline of our existing block, go to the cut tool, cut, and then cut here as well. And then just select, using the small selection tool, select this upper piece and then just delete a few times. And as you can see, this is now our new neckline, which is looking really nice. And then just get your small section tool, click and drag that point up to meet the existing one. And then let's just join them, because at the moment they're completely separate. So small selection tool, click and drag, right click, join. Click and drag, right click, join. Lovely, so that's the front neckline, which is looking gorgeous. Uh, next we're going to do our back neckline. So essentially we want to have the same measurement because we, we don't want to have an overlap here. We want the same measurement front and back. So let's just create a point like so. And then we're going to go back. So we're going to, sorry, let's do this properly. Get our big selection tool, click on this point, hit the enter key and then go minus five to go to the left, as you can see the preview, and hit OK. And then we go rotation tool or R on your keyboard click on that point rotate so we know that that is 5cm and then we can draw in our back now I want to keep this really simple um, I actually for the sample um, I'm not sure if I want to keep that image on there but the back is a very very deep V and unfortunately it kind of broke the block a little bit um, because there was too much material lost here and the whole front of the dress swung forward a bit but I would suggest with this block keeping it very simple at the back you need a bit of support at the back here to support all the weight of the dress so I would say here get your point copy paste let's go to the back neck that's not quite on point and then from the nape of the neck we're going to measure down probably about two centimeters okay click OK and that's that's a nice enough uh, that's a nice distance away from the nape of the neck just to expose a bit of the neckline but still give it enough support for this garment okay and then I'm just going to go to my pen tool P on the keyboard click click and then I'm going to go shift C on the keyboard to get the anchor point tool click here and then just drag okay hold down the shift key and it will align to the horizontal and just create a nice smooth curve okay nothing too dramatic lovely and the next we're just going to remove these points as said you can you can play around this if you want to you can do all kinds of things you can have a what do you call it a um a little point at the back neck you know you can uh yeah do whatever you want really you can have something like that perhaps and you'll have a you know just always remember you're mirror imaging it okay so it's up to you uh, anyway, I'm going to have mine at t two centimeters, and there we go. Lovely, that's looking nice. And then obviously, actually no, let's move it down by one cm. You can actually move this line itself just by clicking on the line, then clicking on the point, hitting the Enter key. This will move anything. Anything you select, the Enter key will move it. Zero horizontal, and let's go down by one cm, just to get a bit more of a slope going on. Let's hit OK. We can remove our existing point, remove our existing shoulder point, and then we go small selection tool, select the outside of our block, go to the cut tool, cut, cut, and then select the upper block, and then just hit delete a few times. Go to the small selection tool, click and drag, right click, join, right click, sorry, click and drag over those two points, right click, join. There we go, lovely. So that is our neckline, which essentially looks like this when it's actually on. All right, so next uh, we've created our neckline, which is great, and we created our dress. We just need to create some facings for this dress. So, uh, you know, we can actually twirl it up, and we haven't got a raw line for the neck, and we haven't got a raw line for the dress hem either. Um, I'm going to leave the sleeves raw because we want to add a sleeve to this possibly at a later date. So I'm just going to do a facing for the neckline. Perhaps we want a cap or maybe a long sleeve for this. And you can follow our tutorials to do that. So let's create a facing. So, what we're going to do is, I'm going to create a, uh, let's go to the pen tool, and I'm going to click, it doesn't matter where really, let's just, about maybe roughly the same distance, about 5cm from here downwards. And I'm going to click a point at the shoulder, like so. 
then let's just click off I'm then going to go to my anchor point tool I'm going to click on this point and create what is essentially a second neckline or a facing okay so going to click and drag hold it to the hold the shift key to lock it to the horizontal create a nice smooth curve and okay I was a little bit overzealous there let's move that up a little bit so just get your small selection tool click on the line click on the point move it up until you have something that's relatively parallel to that neck just to keep it nice and clean uh, yeah okay and then we're gonna do exactly the same for the front so let's just get our pen tool I'm gonna click and roughly about let's say here for example and then gonna sorry let's just click that point there we're then going to go to our anchor point tool click and drag out once again I haven't quite matched it and you can do this by eye, it doesn't, you can do it by measurements, you can do it by eye, I'm just doing it for the speed of this tutorial just by eye, but you can measure from here to here and etc. Alright, so that's the basically the facing for the, the neckline, but we need to have this as a separate item, because it's not very good as one line at the moment. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this block first of all, and I don't need all of it, I just need essentially these this upper piece here. I'm going to copy and paste. See, how easy is that? Simple. And then I'm just going to get my big selection tool and drag it over to the side here. Let's just zoom in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this template, this, this block, as my template, and just simply cut the block where these two lines intersect. So I'm essentially tracing off, similarly you're doing manual pattern cutting as well, I'm just tracing off the top of that block and using my line here that I've kind of like created, and this is now my facing. So once I've created it, sorry, I'm going a little bit quickly. So once I have cut here and here, I'm then going to get my small selection tool and then just select that lower block, delete a few times, and now I have my facing, but it's two separate items. So let's go to the small selection tool, click and drag, we're going to join those points, click and drag, we're going to join those points. Okay, and now we have the front, so that was the back facing complete. Go to my big selection tool, so I want to take all of it. If you were to try and do that with your small selection tool, you would end up with something like that. So big selection tool, click and drag, and you can then move it back into position, which is great. In fact, let's just move that up for a second. Small selection tool, let's turn this into a guideline, because it's good, it shows us on our block where that facing would actually intersect. And then let's just move this facing back to where it was. Lovely, and then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a notch, okay? And a notch essentially is something you add to your pattern, so let's just go back, I'm just going to get my big section tool, click on that, control C to copy, control V to paste. I'm just going to basically drag that to let's say roughly, I don't know, halfway between these two points. And what a notch does essentially is where you align your patterns. Uh, so let's just make sure that is, the center of that is actually on the center. There we go. You can nudge it around using your keyboard. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to copy and paste that again and we're going to move it pretty much exactly over the existing point. We need two of these, okay? We need two of these points, really important. So once we have two of these points and we have our facing on top of our existing pattern, we're now going to separate them but taking one of these points with us. So, big section tool, click on one of the points or one of the notches, sorry, and then hold down the shift key, click on your facing pattern and then just drag it up top. And there, look, you can see that existing point's been left and you've got a new one here. And then what we do is big selection tool, click and drag, object, group. Same with this, object, group. And so what that does is it allows us, when it comes to putting this pattern together, to know where those two pattern pieces match up. Okay, really important. We can do exactly the same process for the front now. Okay, that's the back. So for the front, uh, here is our line. Let's just turn that into a guideline so we know what we're dealing with. And I'm going to get my big selection tool. I'm going to click and drag over those two pieces. I'm just going to go copy and paste. Okay, we've got a bit of a broken block there, but we don't need it. It's fine. We just need this top area here. I'm going to go to my small selection tool. Click on this outline. Go to the scissor tool. Cut. And then, oops, okay. Um, just, that's fine. Just get rid of that one. And then click on this again to select it. And then cut and then get rid of that line. Then once again, click and drag, right click, join, click and drag, right click, join, and then let's go eyedropper tool, get the attributes of that pattern line. And next we can just move this back into place, 
like so. And let's get a notch. Let's go all over here. Control C to copy. Control V to paste. And then put it roughly halfway between those two points. And then we're just going to copy and paste another one in. That did actually paste on top, which is a bit odd. But anyway, it's there. So sorry, let's just copy, paste. There we go. And then just make sure you move that on top. And then let's zoom out. Big selection tool. Click on your facing panel. Click on your point. Sorry, let's go for the point first. Then we go for the facing. Move that up. You can hold down the shift key to make sure it's in line. You see? Uh, there you go. Hold down the shift key to make sure it's in line. And then we're just going to big selection tool. Object. Group. And then this bottom bit. Let's just go object and group. Okay, so that's the facing for the top of your garment. Now, let's do the facing for the bottom. Now, this is slightly more complicated. It's similar to how we do seam allowances, uh, but it's still good fun. So, what we're going to do is we're going to get a small selection tool, click on this here, get our cut tool, snip, snip, and we're going to do the same for the front. Snip, snip. That's okay, already cut out. Okay, so here. We have these two lines, which is great. Now we essentially we want a we want to have another line for the facing that's roughly I don't know maybe four or five cm away from the baseline. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to get a line tool, click and drag. Get your big selection tool, click on it, hit the enter key, and we're going to go zero for horizontal, and we're going to go vertically down by let's say how how big do we want our facing to be? Let's say because it's quite a long dress, about three point five four centimeters. Let's go vertically down by four and hit copy. Okay, so that's now four centimeters distance. Lovely. So that is essentially the distance where we want our facing to be. I'm just going to get that bottom line again and I'm going to go enter key again. I'm going to go zero and I'm going to go four once again, hit copy. So we need three lines that are essentially four centimeters and four centimeters apart. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my big section tool and I'm going to create a brush. So I'm going to select these three items. I'm then going to go to my brushes. If you can't see it in your palette, just go to Window and then Brushes. Yeah, I'm just going to take this item and drag it on to there. You see, and it'll open up this box. I'm still holding it. I'm still clicking and dragging, and then just drag it into this grey area, and you'll see the little bo box go blue. And it'll say, right, what kind of brush do you want? And I'm going to go Art Brush, always Art Brush. Click OK, and then here we're going to go. Uh, well, you can call this. Um, hem facing if you want to, if you want to duplicate it. And then this is the direction you want. So you don't want it that well. You don't want it up or down. You want it either left or right. It's up to you. Either left or right, doesn't matter. And then click OK. And you'll see it's appeared here. So if we then just get rid of this, so big selection tool, get rid of this, delete. We're then going to go to this line, small selection tool, click on this line, and then I'm just going to go, boom. There you go. Ah. Uh, how effortless is that? So now we have another line, and this is 4cm apart, and it's smooth, it's perfect. There you go, 4cm, excellent. But we have three lines, and I'm not going to explain why we have three lines, uh, but essentially when you create your brushes, you need to create three lines, and then we just remove one later. Um, so don't worry about it too much. So to do that, we just simply get our big section tool, click on this line. What's going on there? Sorry, excuse me, bear with me. Hmm. Okay, that's really unusual. Okay, we're just going to go back, just briefly. So this line should be separated from the rest of your block. So if I go to my big selection tool and I click on it, the whole block is being selected. It's because it's grouped. Ah, that's why, it's because it's grouped. Okay, sorry, so let's just go object, ungroup. There we go, so that's our line. Okay, just selected by itself. Yeah, okay, sorry, forgive me, bear with me. So let's just go to our line, click on that line, and then add our facing. Then we're going to go, while well, it's still selected, we're going to go Object, and then Expand Appearance, and this gives us our expanded line, which means we can edit it. So let's go to our Small Selection tool, click on the bottom one, because we don't want that, and then delete it. Okay. I'm going to do exactly the same for the front. I'm going to select that line. I'm then going to click, there we go. I'm going to go Object, 
expand, I'm going to get the bottom line and just delete it. And so now we have these two lines, which is great. We do exactly the same as we did with the front. I'm going to get my big selection tool. I'm going to select the line we just drew and the outline of the block. I'm going to copy and paste it in, move it down here somewhere out of the way, get my small selection tool, select the outline of that block, like so, and just snip, snip, and then get rid of the top of that block by small selection tool, select it, and then just delete a few times. And this is our bottom facing. Then simply small selection tool, click and drag, right click. It's already joined. No, it's not. OK, this is a slight thing. So you can't actually join those because they're in a group. So just go to your big selection tool, click on this, and go, or click on click on your your um, your brush, object, and then ungroup, and just click again. You see there are now individual lines. That's great. Then go to your small selection tool, click and drag. <laughs> okay. Okay, there's a reason why, and I know what the reason why is. Sorry, forgive me. This this happens every once in a while. Okay, let's go down. You know what? You know what's far easier? Um I'm just gonna get rid of these lines. Delete that. Delete that. And I'm just gonna go to my pen tool. I'm gonna go join, join. Join, join. There's loads of ways you can actually join these pieces up, but that seems to be an easier way. When it, I haven't done these facings for a while. Uh, and then we can just simply click and drag that back into place where it originally was. In fact, no, let's move it here first. Let's go to our small selection tool, click on our existing line, turn it into a guideline so we know where it is. Let's go to our big selection tool, move this back into place. We can zoom in, nudge it down a little bit, just make sure it's in the right location. Perfect. And then we can add a notch. So let's grab a notch, copy it, paste, and possibly you might want two. So maybe, because this is quite a long line, you might want two. So you can have one here, copy and paste a new one in, place it here, nudge it down a little bit. There we go. And then let's go big section tool, select both of those, hold down the shift key, and then just go edit, copy, edit, paste. There they are, and you can drag them both back into position like that. And then what we can do is get a big selection tool, click on one of the points this side, click on one of the points, hold down the shift key, click on one of that point, and then click on your facing, and then just move that down, and there you have it. Okay. Then let's just big selection tool, select these both together, object, group, same with this, object, group. Okay, that's our facing for the back. Now let's do the facing for the front. Hopefully we won't have too many issues this time. So this is our line, which is lovely. Let's get big section tool, select our guideline. Let's just let's get rid of that. So yeah, we can select. We've obviously already expanded this, so I'm just going to basically drag this down. No, I'm not. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this is simple normally. So I'm going to get my small selection tool. I'm going to no big selection tool. I'm going to click on. Uh, these two lines here, I'm going to go object and then ungroup. There we go. I'm going to click on this line here. I'm going to click on this line. I'm going to click on the outside of our block. No, I'm not going to click on the outside of my block. Sorry, I'm going to get my big section tool. I'm going to click on this line and this line, holding down the shift key. I'm then going to copy and paste. Next, I'm going to get my pen tool. And I'm going to join this one and this one this one and this one. Okay, uh, next I'm going to move this, so let's small selection tool, select that original line, turn it into a guideline. There we go. Yeah, that one needs to stay in place, that's fine. Let's then, big selection tool, grab this panel, move it back into the original location. Let's get a notch. Copy that. Paste it in and then move it to maybe one-third and two-thirds. Oh, there we go. Copy and paste, and then move that to about here. Nudge it up with the arrow keys. And then let's just get both. So copy, sorry, let's just select that point. Hold down the shift key, select that point. And let's go Control-C to copy, Control-V to paste, and then move them on top of each other, like that. And next we can just go 
big section tool, select, hold down the shift key, select, hold, uh, hold down the shift key and select that lining, or the facing, sorry. Just move it down, and there you have the facing for the front panel. And then big section tool, just click and drag, make sure you get those two points and the block, and go object, and then group. And we can do the same for these as well. And then just object, group. Okay, there we have it. So we have the, the facing for the front, facing for the back, and then we have the hem facings as well. And let's just save this. Let's just go file and then save as. You should probably save this as you go along. And we're going to save it in the original folder, which is here, and we're going to call it 3C Francesca A line pattern because it's essentially finished. And we're going to save it as either an AI or SVG format. AI will open up in Adobe Illustrator. SVG opens up in pretty much anything like Coral Draw, Inkscape, whatever you like. So I'm going to save it as an SVG. Click Save. Click OK. Okay, so now our pattern is pretty much finished off. Um, the only thing left to do now is either you can take a look at our other design uh, tutorials, like necklines or sleeves, for example, which will show you how to maybe add a different sleeve type or a different neckline um, to basically customize your pattern further. However, if you feel like your pattern is finished, um, then I would say the best thing to do is head on over to a different tutorial, which is how to add seam allowance to your finished pattern. Uh, there's a download link at the bottom of this tutorial, uh, which should take you to that. It's very, very informative, uh, very, very easy as well. And also, when you've added your seam allowance, it's probably a good idea to have a look at how to transfer your digital pattern to a multi-page PDF using our templates. And we have a tutorial that shows you how to do that also. And once again, you can find that at the bottom of this page as a tutorial link. Um, otherwise, thank you so much and um, see you soon.